How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I've just got basically number 8 in my top favourite trucks. If I'm honest I might juggle them around a bit, I probably would put this at number 10 but I've been playing around with a few of the different trucks that didn't quite make the list for the last few days because I wasn't really happy about just slinging any old truck in there. So yeah, I've kind of been driving all the runners up trying to feel out uh, which one I like the best and uh, yeah like I say number 8 was missing because I'm going to do the my favourite scouts as a separate list so there was a gap to be filled and by god I was going to fill it that's what she said so yeah the reason why I've chose this one in the end there's a couple of reasons but I I do actually quite like this truck and I've used it quite a lot but for whatever reason just every time I've bought it in the past whether it was to do a review on it or just have a little play around with it I ended up running out of money so I'd just go and sell it back and yeah that was it I just then didn't have it for a bit and I kind of just kept forgetting about it for a little bit then I'd see it again and think oh, 50 grand odd I'll buy it stick a few bits and bobs on it and then basically uh, one of the reasons it originally didn't make the top 10 is I don't really use it for like any missions or gameplay and I don't really use it a hell of a lot but I do like flying down the runway with it it's basically it's got S plus on the power which is nice that post at the end of the runway by the way should be illegal <laughs> how much of a pain in the ass it is um yeah it but it's also got some like fairly unique situation with its suspension you could so like it drifts pretty well not like the same way the voron grad does though, and i prefer the way the voron grad drifts but i believe on the back of it as somebody called it is it like rocker arm suspension i didn't really know when they said it i was like oh i'm not sure and then they said oh like the d535 on mud runner i was like oh yeah <laughs> i know exactly what you mean and uh, I'll show you in a little bit because I end up flipping the truck and can have a bit of a better look at it. But yeah, like essentially this truck doesn't have suspension on the back end of it. It's only the front that's actually like springy. The back seems to operate on yeah what essentially is like a rocker arm suspension. So there's kind of um, imagine a bar connecting both axles on each side, and then in, in the middle of that bar there seems to be what I assume is like big rubber um, bushes or something like that so where like when, once the arm swings one axle goes up and one axle kind of goes down but they're connected to each other and long story short the way it plays out on this truck is it's kind of just solid at the back it doesn't drop down at all but you'll see the tires jiggle kind of up and down kind of opposite to each other because they're both axles are connected and um yeah, in some ways it makes it a bit awkward for this game because uh, it's quite low down. Like obviously, even now there's just there's no really give on it for it to go any lower. So the chassis does sit quite low, and you can catch some things with it. But then it also has this like I don't know. There's certain situations where it actually still keeps going through the mud, and it's almost as if because there is no give in the suspension. It's just absolutely like a solid plank that's pushed down into the floor. There's nowhere for it to bleed the grip by bouncing the suspension, if that makes sense. And that, I wouldn't say it's completely accurate, but you'll kind of see. I mean, it makes up for a lot of it because it's got S plus on the power, so it's got a hell of a lot of power. Obviously, chain tyres, but it's got the twin um, tyre rears and everything, so there's a decent amount of power actually being applied to the floor from the back it's not that much of a heavy truck either in some ways that can go for it and that can go against it but yeah as you can see it's not as terrible as you'd think for an off-road truck funnily enough I would like um, you know how they've got like the three highway trucks in this game I would say this to me is kind of my idea as it probably should have been in the highway truck section but it'd be ve it'd be the best highway truck if it was. Um, again, partly because of the power. It obviously does off-road in not too bad, but you can see here it doesn't just drive through that muddy corner like a lot of the uh, you know like the Dolphin did, the Tager did, the Vorongrad. But it has also got obviously the um, diff locks on. They're not engaged all the time, and I suppose in a way that does potentially hold it back a little. Well, not hold it back, but you know what I mean. You, you've got to drop it into low to engage the diffs. In certain situations, I was going to say, like, you could obviously put the low-range box in and you've got the three low-range options. But if I'm honest, I don't really ever use this to do off-road missions. And maybe I would if I could just redo all my missions as much as I wanted. Or, like, I'm doing this con uh, contest on uh, Black River. 
then I'll use it for the sakes of variety, but yeah, it's just not something that I'd really pick if I want to go out and, like, conquer the off-road terrain, so it's kind of cut out from that bit anyway, but yeah, as far as a fun truck goes, like I said, it does drift, and it, uh, another reason why I think it drifts very well is because that back end is essentially, like, solid, there is no spongy suspension, once you start drifting, it's just, yeah, it's planted, that it doesn't, it can't really become boaty or anything like that and it is physically possible to drift it sideways and roll it but yeah you'll also probably enjoy how much you can drift it and mess around and it certainly slowed down there I don't, I'm not really sure why to be honest it just it might be the terrain there it is a bit awkward around that drilling site thing but it just slowly slowly started to wind down in high but I got there in the end uh, it wasn't too bad obviously it get the job done that's the sort of thing where yeah, I wouldn't say it's very purpose-built for off-roading, but it's surprising how much it can kind of wing it and still make its way. But going along here, you can see along the roads, I mean, it's almost bordering on, like, too fast for its own good. That wasn't even... Like, now I went for the Jeff Special, and it started uh, flying pretty well. But yeah, at first, I was only in 7th out of 8th gear, and it started flying along. And I took damage down the bottom there, but a lot of trucks do... Here you can see while it's uh, come up, that's where I smashed into a wall. <laughs> I was trying to do the Jeff special as I was flying out the uh, garage. Can you see like the bar that's connecting both the axles and as they're jiggling at the same time? And it's like in the middle of that bar between both axles is where it's kind of connected to the chassis. And it was like I was trying to zoom the camera in on it as best I could, but it's yeah, it's kind of like that bar must go through either rubber or some kind of metal bushes, a little bit like the leaf springs maybe. But, yeah, as it rocks back and forth, it obviously wants to return to a level position. But it's a pretty unique uh, suspension setup. If I'm honest, now I come to think of it, I don't really know why they haven't got more trucks with that kind of setup, because, as someone said, and I I've said the same as well from Mudrunner, I really wish they'd add, uh, like, the D535, the D537, the E... I can't remember what it was called, but, like, the big Russian thing that looks like it carries a missile down the middle of it um yeah whereas off the top of my head i think this is the only one that has like what i believe is called rocker arm suspension like, i've never heard that term myself until the other month but yeah makes sense <laughs> i know what a rocker arm is but i've uh, never heard it in terms of suspension so coming along here the reason why i came to the quarry will become apparent in a minute um it was not bad through there all things considered I mean, I keep kind of setting the bar for it, like it is a highway truck and yet it's not, so I suppose it should be like classed as a little better off-road and it has got all-wheel drive and diff locks and so on. But um, driving up here, this is where it's these situations where, especially now I've got some weight on the back, like these slabs are pretty heavy, it's kind of shoving the, those rear wheels into the ground, but because, yeah, there's no suspension between the weight of the trailer and the rear axles to the floor. There's kind of no loss of... Not momentum, but you know what I mean? When they test, like, the brake horsepower, it's like you can do it from the crankshaft or the wheels, and you kind of lose a bit between the crankshaft and the wheels because of, like, friction and blah, blah, blah. It's just kind of like it's one less thing in the equation, and because of that, it's like the tyres are just very planted in the floor, and they have no choice but to be planted, so the end result is the truck kind of just keeps muscling along very well and uh, it is a bit iffy here I ended up going into low range with the diffs on and uh, I, I did this in the review video as well the reason why I came back and did it tonight is because it is one thing I kind of I still remember from the review video without even watching it again it was just I was pretty happy pretty impressed with the fact that this thing actually made it all the way up this third quarry hill on its own or most of the way anyway a lot of trucks have already tapped out by this point. Even um, bigger trucks like the Colob is already wheel spinning by now. Uh, well, both Colobs, I think the Dolphin, John. The, like There is loads of trucks that don't quite get up here on their own. Whereas with a little bit of jiggling around, it's a little bit light on the front end, so it was trying to wheelie a little bit. I got to this point where I can now winch to the tree, but kind of whenever I want. The trailer got hooked on that rock a bit, but I'll kind of skip that because, yeah. That's more the trailer and that particular road than anything else. 
Um, another reason why I do quite like this though, and I have driven it before, is you can see it's a little bit lively, a little bit too lively for its own good, I would say sometimes. And if you're wanting to use this kind of properly for a mission, you may be better off using the off-road gearbox. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons I actually like it, it's almost like a good, um, I don't know, kind of a training truck for practicing like not just the drifting but like the mechanics of this game once a truck's going over a certain speed and yeah because it is a little bit lively you get used to like catching the drift and turning in early and I don't know I just think it's quite a good truck for kind of tweaking my driving style and that I don't really know how to explain it but yeah it's just like quite a good training tool to actually get me back onto like how the mechanics of the game work. Say when I was driving that Voron AE, like when they did the rift update, at the same time that they changed the steering, so my Tega suddenly had different steering. So then I had to get used to that for a few hours. Then I drove the Voron AE for the review. Then I went back to the Tega and it was like opposite ends of the steering spectrum and I almost got a bit like muddled with how I'm driving in the game and I kept crashing both trucks in the end quite a lot. And I remember I took this out for a good while and just kind of dr messed around, drifting down the White Valley um, runway, going down, yeah, Smithville Dam Roads, driving along Black River, just all sorts of maps. And I don't know, it just kind of got me back into the swing of how the trucks behave and I sort of, yeah, felt a bit better after that. You see there where it's drifting, a lot of trucks would have dug in then and flipped way before, whereas that thing, you can see again with the suspension how they're kind of rocking tandem rather than just being completely independent of each other. Obviously the front, again, has just got normal suspension. So that is collapsible and it will drop the nose down if and when you break the suspension. But yeah, this is like just sometimes messing around. I like to fly him off the cliff, I like to try and do uh, the Jeff special and again, for some reason on that runway they just decided to put a post in one of the shittest places possible. Which does make it a bit of a pain in the ass because you end up kind of drifting sideways and cocking your uh, attempt up more trying to miss the post than just trying to hit the cliff edge nicely. And uh, another thing I suppose I do like about it, that's, see, a loaf, you just got to throw it in there, who <laughs> knows what it's doing. Um, I like that you can actually have a sideboard and stuff on it, you can actually have more attachments than you would think really because to me as well this kind of has the traditional American truck, like uh, American highway truck shape, a bit like I was saying with the Navistar, although to be fair in this game it's kind of an army, a souped up army version of a highway truck. But nonetheless, with the Navistar, like, I could only have, um, when I had the crane on the back, I could only have a ramped flatbed. Or if I had the semi-trailer, I can't have a crane. And it was kind of one of those trucks where, yeah, you just had a saddle high, saddle low, and, or the crane, but you couldn't have both. This thing, you can have, like, uh, the saddle, you can have, the like, the van repair body. I don't think you can have the maintenance thing. Uh, you can have a large crane. Like, you can have most of the usual add-ons that you can put on all the other trucks. Which, again, just makes it pretty useful. But I suppose now, well, I mean, I've popped a loaf in there, of course. Always take a loaf with you. And I was just going for a little lap. And um, I was using this the other week. Just kind of flying up and down here. It's, I don't know. It's quite fun just to fly up and down the ice. Again, trying the Jeff Special. Like, this thing goes pretty bloody fast when... If you can get it doing the Jeff Special and you're going in a nice straight line with a clear path in front of you. This thing is definitely up there as one of the faster Jeff Specials in the game. And now as well, another thing. And I think the suspension kind of helps in a weird way. I don't know how to explain it because I don't really know how the coding of the ice works or anything. But I've said it before when I'm driving over ice with... Um, a truck that's got collapsed suspension that it seems to like punch through the ice less easily and I was noticing it tonight with it like it's pretty deep I didn't get over the ice every time but mo a good 75% of the time I just drove across the ice and it cracked it a bit but it didn't punch all the way through to where it now catches your tyres and you've now officially got to kind of climb back up it like it was close but yeah it skimmed its way across and then going along here as well, again, not, I'm not trying to sell it as like the uh, the craziest off-road truck, but it's certainly eating up the terrain pretty nicely as I'm going. 
And now, I honestly thought at the minute, I was like, really? Is it that shit on snow? Um, I thought it was kind of like I clipped the edge of the snow bank and it absolutely just stopped me, but as you'll see in a second, like when I looked around, there was a uh, pretty big rock behind that tree that I originally hit. I didn't even see it, but I must have bumped over it with my front axle and yeah, it was just wedged under the truck. But that's where, and you'll see in a minute, is like the best example, that's where that rocker arm suspension can kind of become a negative thing because like then for example it didn't want to just bump the tire over the rock it's trying to bump my whole truck over the rock and I'll uh, I'll explain the rest in a sec because there's a better bit coming up but cutting across here I've been through here in all sorts of stuff and you've probably seen plenty of gameplay of me coming across here it's basically just gone past where you get the TUZ16 and I'm heading towards the cliff but quite a lot of trucks still plod along pretty slowly through this bit, especially you can still hear all the ice cracking, like there's chunks of ice in that mud that just, yeah, it's another thing that slows you down, and I'm not even in low range with the diffs on yet, this was just in auto, and I do believe it does help at the minute having a loaf in the back because it's adding a bit more weight to those rear tyres, which is just, yeah, trucks like the Colob, the P16, they're so heavy, they just create their own grip with their own weight. But I mean, motoring up here just fine, put it in high, and again it's got very nice, yeah, like pulling power to it. I don't know though there, if I was clipping the snow again, but I will say I don't think it's very good in the snow. So, right, this is the best example with the rocker arm suspension. You see now where it's just hit the, like, say the second axle. If that had its own independent suspension, it would lift that axle individually it'd like at least depress the suspension and try and just bump that axle up the lip of the rock but because the way this suspension is and it's already pretty much on its dick and it's about as low as it's going to go like just then it wasn't trying to just bump the second axle up that lip I was trying to lift the whole rear of the truck including the loaf that's in the sideboard and then there just wasn't enough like power for that the tyres aren't massive enough just to claw up but yeah, that's where it can be a disadvantage, basically. And I suppose the way I'd treat this truck is like... Yeah, a surprisingly capable highway truck. That's still just in my head. That's kind of the category I put this in. But I definitely think it'd easily beat like the um, Ford Clit and the Transtar and everything. And even going through here, yeah, I mean, that's where the S Plus Power just makes up quite nicely for it. But then you can see now, though, because there is no rear suspension, the loaf was bouncing around a lot and jumping around. I haven't got the winch connected at the minute. If I did, it would have been fine. But, again, I was kind of curious myself. It was kind of showing the point that, yeah, that's the bad side of the suspension, I suppose, that there is no give to it. So if you bounce on something with the rear, it's just going to flick the back end of your truck up. And if you are carrying something like this, then, uh, yeah, it's going to jump around a hell of a lot. But yeah, as far as a fun truck to explore the characteristics of the game, I do think it's got a place and it's not that expensive, so I think it's worth getting. Of course, get yourself a loaf, it's a goddamn horse of a vehicle, it's always ready. But yeah, that's about it for today, I hope you've enjoyed, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.